This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. Find out more and open an account online at telhio.org. Now, here's your host, Bob McGilligan. A very long road trip has finally come to an end, and the Blue Jackets ended it last night with a win over the Vancouver Canucks. Welcome to a Monday Mailbag edition of CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. I'm Bob McElligan. Yes, the Blue Jackets were able to salvage a bit out of this trip last night by beating the Vancouver Canucks. Five to nothing was the final score. It was a good game for a couple of guys in particular. Josh Anderson had two goals for the Blue Jackets last night. Sergei Bobrovsky picked up his seventh shutout of the year. Pierre Luc Dubois got on the board with a goal last night. We've been waiting for him to. Uh, find his scoring touch once again. He did that last evening. Uh, Ryan Dezingle picked up only his second goal with the Blue Jackets uh, since the season began, and or since he arrived, I should say. Since he arrived with the Blue Jackets, only his second goal. And Oliver Bjorkstrand with another beauty off his stick last night. So uh, it, was, it was a good effort by the Blue Jackets. There's no question about it. Now, am I going to um, – well, I'm not going to say anything right now. I'll wait until I get to your questions. And then I will say what it is I have to say when it comes to last night's game and where the Blue Jackets are and where they are is still outside the playoff picture and looking in. And that's because they didn't. Well, there wasn't going to be a a lot of help yesterday. Something was going to give because Carolina played Montreal. Those are the two teams the Blue Jackets are chasing, but they are especially chasing the Montreal Canadiens for the last playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. And, of course, that game went to overtime before Carolina got the win. So that gave Montreal one more point. But, again, the Blue Jackets hold the tiebreaker with Montreal, even though they're two points back. They just – you just got to win. Uh, there's no room for error. There are very few losses that you can still afford to take if you're this Blue Jackets team. You get the head-to-head meeting with Montreal coming up at home on Thursday. Tomorrow the Blue Jackets will be playing the New York Islanders – and Montreal is going to be at home taking on the Florida Panthers. It would be nice to get a little help from the Panthers, but you've got to help yourself against the Islanders first, and that has been tough for the Blue Jackets this year. They have struggled against uh, Barry Trotz's Islanders team and that team defense that they play. So uh, they've got they've got to do their work, and there's no question. They've got to do their work the rest of the way. If they do, I mean, right now if you ran the table, you're in because you have a game in hand on Montreal and you have the head-to-head meeting. And that would be enough to get it done. But are you going to win every game from here to the end? Most likely not. So the ones that if you lose, and I think you can lose one time, maybe two. That's not a great situation to be in, to be honest with you. But uh, And I can see the Nashville game being a troublesome game because it normally is there. And you've got a team there that is getting a little bit desperate in their division. You know, beyond that, games are, well, every one of them is winnable, quite frankly. Every single one of them is winnable. But it's going to take getting on a roll. If you get on a roll, you're going to get in. If you continue to stumble and trip over yourself, you're not going to make it. It's as simple as that. So there you have it. Now, I've got a whole host of questions today, and I'm going to get to those right now. Well, right after I tell you about the good folks over at Telhio Credit Union, who are the ones that have been there all year long to bring you this show, which uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what they do for us and make this possible. But they make a lot of things possible for you. If you become a member of Telhio Credit Union, they've got uh, plenty of options for you, checking account options, savings account options. Uh, They've got uh, CDs. They've got personal loans. Everything that you might need to make it through your life, let's be honest about it. I mean, where you put your money, what you get out of your money is a huge part of your life. There's no question. So what can Telhio Credit Union do for you? Well, you can find out just by going online to their website at telhio.org. They've got all of the information, and it's stacked up for you really well. It's very easy to get to and get your questions answered. And if you still have a question that you can't seem to find the answer to on their website there's a live chat button just go ahead and hit it and you can actually converse with somebody right there you can also stop by one of their local offices when you happen to be out and about tell Ohio credit union is open to everyone in central and southwestern ohio and they are federally insured by ncua all right let's get to it what 
questions have I gotten this morning? And I say this morning, and by the way, at the time that I'm putting this together, I don't think I've ever done this show this early in the day. I haven't. It's uh, I started just after 7.30. So that's, I mean, now, if you were in Columbus, if you're in the east, 10.30, in the, yeah, that's, that's normal. I've done it then, but not at 7.30 in the morning. But we're taking the flight out of here today, so I wanted to get this done so that you had it. Uh, for the rest of the, day, of the day while we are heading home. The first question comes from Jason, who says, I thought the referees let that game get out of control a little bit with headshots last night. Luke Shen didn't seem to be content unless he knocked somebody out of the game. That is a troublesome part of this year with guys uh, that have nothing to lose. I was just wondering what your take on this is. Well, I think that um, I think there was some stuff that carried over from the last time the two teams played each other. Uh, Josh Anderson had a big hit on uh, Alexander Edler. and uh, Or, I mean, Edler had a big hit on Josh Anderson, sorry. And then Anderson had a big hit on him last night, early in the game, which kind of, um, you know, set the, the tone for that game. And then Luke Shen just uh, picked it up. And, yeah, he was hitting guys all over the place. He had a hit on Jenner that was uh, – Fortunately, nothing could have been something, but it was nothing. Uh, look, that's that's just uh, par for the course at this time of the year. And yes, you're right. Uh, when you have a team that has nothing to play for, except for pride in their part. Now, remember, they had lost a big game to Calgary the night before, and they were tired, and they were looking for some kind of energy. And I think uh, that I think that Luke Shen was trying to provide that energy with those hits. And I didn't mind that because I, I thought some of that stuff woke the Blue Jackets up because they didn't start well. Let's not forget the beginning of that game. In the first couple of minutes, they were in danger of giving up a goal. Sergei Bobrovsky was the difference. He was really good in the opening few minutes of that game. Um, so I thought that helped to wake up the Blue Jackets a little bit. I didn't have that much of a problem with it. Uh, yeah, some of the hits were – some were borderline, but – you know, the Canucks would say that Anderson should have been given a five minutes for the hit that he put on uh, Edler and maybe five and knocked out of the game. And if that would have happened, whoa, what a different game it would have been, right? So everybody has their opinion on it. I I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Um, as you go through the rest of the schedule and you talk about teams that have nothing to lose in doing that, I just don't think teams hit anymore in this league. I think that's a, a one-off game where you happen to have a guy that still plays the old-school way uh, I, I just don't think you're going to see that in every game. I, I don't think you're going to see it in most games, maybe not in any games the rest of the way down the stretch. Uh, Marshall Foster, uh, Mar <laughs> again, it's early for me, okay? Give me a break here. Marshall Foster says, I was shocked that Adam McQuay didn't take matters into his own hands, went up four to nothing, but then again can't afford to get hurt uh, with the thin defense. At four to nothing, two to nothing is when you fight. Four to nothing, you're controlling the game. It's you forget about it. You just forget about it. There's no, you're right. There's no sense in taking maybe what could be a senseless injury. You got to think about other things, and that, yeah, there was no need for anybody to fight anybody in that game last night. There really wasn't none, it, unless you're the Canucks and you wanted to try to spark something. Then maybe, but on the. Uh, the Blue Jackets side, uh, no. No, there there wasn't any need for Adam McQuaid or anybody else to fight anybody. Uh, here's one from Bobby. It's not from me to me. It's from somebody else. Uh, how has the team's morale been on the road? I don't see Cam smiling out there like he usually is. Then again, I'm not sure that I would be either after this road trip and with their current situation trying to make the playoffs. I think for Cam especially, it's been frustrating because – you know, last night, uh, Panarin looked more like himself. Dubois looked more like himself. Uh, Cam is still struggling. He's still sitting on 38 goals, and he's he's not scoring. So he doesn't smile when he doesn't score. Because I, and, and I think he's pushing. I think a lot of guys are doing that, but uh, I think that he in particular is pushing and uh, squeezing the stick a little bit. He would probably tell you no, but that's what I would tell you if I were him too. Uh, so from that standpoint, yeah, maybe with him. Uh, the morale has been pretty good. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think it was great in the Edmonton game. I thought it was just, uh, you know, they just looked flat all around, and it was not great. But these last couple of days in Vancouver, 
leading up to last night's game, uh, I think did them well. Now, will it do them well enough? I can't tell you that. I can, I'll have a better idea tomorrow night. But I think it did them well. So I think the morale is okay. Um, but, but it's not great. But it's, I don't think it's, it's where it needs to be. But they can get there very quickly with a couple more wins for sure. Here's a question from J-Law. It says, you get a lot of hockey questions, but I want to ask you, what's the best thing to do in Buffalo – when in the city other than go to Niagara Falls. I'll be at the game on Sunday. I hope they score seven again like they did when I tweeted you in St. Louis and Detroit. Well, I hope they do too, J-Law. Um, what is there to do in Buffalo rather than go, other than go to Niagara Falls? Well, you can go eat wings, which is uh, always a good pastime in Buffalo, and there are several different places for you that uh, are good for that. Uh, There's a casino in Buffalo, if you're into that. And other than that, and believe me, I've been going to Buffalo for a long time. When I was doing AAA baseball, we used to go there for three and four days at a time. And I'm going to be honest with you, I still haven't found much to do in Buffalo. So those are my suggestions. You might just hole up somewhere and have wings and beer leading up to game time. That is not a bad idea. In fact, I find that to be the best idea. Uh, Let's go to the next question here. Mike Radich, what are your thoughts on Bjorkstrand? He seems to be much more physical and strong on his skates than he normally is. Yeah, he's picked it up, Mike. I agree with you. He's uh, picked it up not just in the couple of goals that he has scored here in uh, a few games, but his – he does look like there's more of a sense of urgency for him along the boards. You know, he's still not the biggest guy. Uh, There's not a lot to him, so he gets knocked off a lot of pucks. But the effort is certainly there from him in uh, battling on the wall and, and making plays. And yes, I've liked, I've liked him. I've look, I've always liked Oliver Bjorkstrand. I just continue to wait for him to break out. Uh, He's up to what? 16 goals now on the season. It's very realistic he gets to 20 on the year. I think this guy in the right situation, and maybe that's the problem, maybe he just hasn't found the right situation yet since he's been here, but I think that he is easily a 20 to 25 goal a year guy. If, like I said, if if he goes about it the right way, and I mean, remember, earlier in the year he had undergone some uh, healthy scratches, so there's some things he has to do for himself too, right? But right now he's doing those things, and, and I like what he's doing right now for sure. Mark Olson says, missing our captain for these important games has to impact the room. Why not move the captaincy to Seth Jones so that we have that influence during the games that Nick Felino is missing? Mark, that sounds like a, a very reasonable request. It really does. It's, it sounds reasonable. But that would have a really big impact. Um, and not necessarily in the positive way that you are hoping that it would. And let me explain to you. To take the captaincy away from somebody is a pretty big deal in this game. Uh, you don't see it happen happen very often, and you really don't see it happen in a guy stay with the same team. Uh, look at the San Jose Sharks. They are the uh, strangest example of it, right? I mean, they have stripped the captaincy from Patrick Marlowe, then from Joe Thornton. Now Joe Pavelski has it. But it's very unusual that the guy that gets that C taken from him or even gives it up because I think the guy that gives it up has still been talked to about it and has uh, not so willingly given it up, if you will. So uh, it's it just because there's – it's not even an ego thing. It's it's a pride thing, and it's uh, you know it's tough once you've been the leader then to drop back and be a follower because you're going to have some guys that are still going to be listening to everything that you say, and it can create a split and a di- and division inside of a room where there doesn't need to be one. Seth can still lead with Nick not being here physically, so that's and that's what's happened on this trip. There's no question about that. Now, all of that being said, at some point when, you know, Nick Felino is not in the picture uh, for when, you know, his, maybe his contract's up or he retires, whatever the case is, it doesn't matter. 
uh, at some point, I think Seth Jones is going to be a captain. I And I do hope it's here, and I would think it would be here. But I think he's got all of the qualities of that, and his day is coming. But you don't – that's not necessarily – the right way to go about it. And again, I understand the question. I understand your thoughts and, and it makes plenty of sense on the surface. But when you dig just a little bit beneath the surface, it uh, would probably create more problems for you than you could imagine. And look, Nick is away from the team for, uh, for personal reasons, for a, for a pretty big deal, quite frankly. And it stinks that he's not with them right now. And, you know, your captain's not there when you're trying to make the playoffs and all that stuff, but the guys have said it, Torts has said it, and I'll tell you again right now, there are things that are more important than hockey, and Nick Felino is dealing with those things. And he shouldn't have to give up his captaincy because of other things that are going on in life that are beyond his or anybody else's control. So that's the other thing about it. I gave you the hockey answer about what it creates when you strip somebody of the captaincy, and then there's the personal answer. He shouldn't have to give that up for for dealing with, um, you know, things that he needs to deal with, in my opinion. Uh, let's get a question here from Kyle. Do you think that last night's game was a turning point for the Blue Jackets? Do you think they can and will make the playoffs? Do I think it was a turning point for them? This is a great question, and this is what I was saying earlier uh, when I said that there were some – things some thoughts that I had about last night's uh game and I uh and I didn't elaborate at the beginning of the show but I will now uh it can be a turning point for the Blue Jackets it can be they were playing against a team that has had its morale busted that was tired playing its second game in as many nights and you know, they kind of caught a break with the schedule on that, if you ask me. They've been sitting here for two days uh, doing doing fun things, um, you know, team bonding, all that stuff, uh, you know, trying to feel better about themselves, whereas Vancouver's not feeling so good about themselves right now. So it can be a turning point. Uh, if they take the goal-scoring aspect of it especially and go into tomorrow's game against the Islanders and put the puck in the net, which they haven't been able to do against the Islanders, uh, if they can do that, it could be seen as a turning point. If they don't, it's just going to be a one-off game against a team that was tired and out of the playoffs and frustrated. So it's up to them to decide whether or not it's going to be a turning point. And they can make the playoffs. As I told you earlier, they can make the playoffs. The path is there. Will they? I still don't know. I mean, none of us knows, but I, I, if you're asking me, based on last night, do I automatically think that the switch is flipped and they're going to the playoffs and, you know, that was the game that defines it? No, I don't feel like that. I don't. You still got to show me more. Don't show me one big win. Show me a four-game winning streak. Show me a three-game winning streak right now. Because if you can win against the Islanders and Montreal this week at home, now you're cooking. Now you've got something. So that's what you've got to show me for me to, to make me a, a true believer. Can they get in? Yes. Am I a true believer that they'll get in? No. But they can make me one in a very big hurry. Josh Anderson's ego says, do you see a solid cohesion between Josh, Matt Duchesne, and Ryan Dezingle on their line? It seems to be really, uh, seems to be really clicking with those three. Yeah, it's... Uh, the. I think like any line, there are some nights it's better than others. Um, you know, last night they were good. Josh gets two goals. Ryan gets a goal. Duchesne made some big plays. So, yeah, it's 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 clicking. Um, I think Duchesne and Anderson are really clicking. I think Dezingo had a good game last night and needs to continue that way because of the three of them, he has uh, been lagging behind the other two. So it's clicking, it's getting better, and I'm sure they're going to play again tomorrow night together and have a chance to improve upon what they did even last night. Jay Alexander says, what is the biggest trap game left on the schedule? Similar to Edmonton last week where they enter the building, quote, knowing they'll leave with points, and they end up with nothing. To be honest with you, 
any of those. A- anything left could be a trap game. I mean, the real traps, though, are the last two games of the year. Well, I think the last, uh, what is it, three of the last four. Because you've got, um, you've got, uh, what, I've lost my train of thought here. Of the ones I, I know, two are the Rangers and the Senators. The last two, oh, Buffalo's the other one. Buffalo's the other one. Although Buffalo is on a back-to-back, traveling from Nashville, losing an hour in the process. So that's there's a that's a little bit tougher one. But those three games are certainly trap games because you should win them all. And if you just show up and think that's enough, then you're not going to win probably any of them. So that's a good question, and those are the games I see as being the most problematic looking at the schedule. I mean, you know, the Islanders game is not a trap game. You, they've they've beaten you. They've shut you out a couple of times, so that's not a trap game. You've got to work to win that one. Then you've got Montreal. Well, that you've got to work to win that one. You haven't beaten them all year. You've got Boston. You're going to have to work to win that one. And then, uh, you know, those other ones, those three that I mentioned, and I mentioned Nashville earlier. You're going to have to work for that one. And, the, and then those other three seem like the easy ones, but they're certainly traps. There's no doubt about it. Brady says, what is the status of Ryan Murray? I know he's been practicing, but are they expecting him back before the postseason, or is it safe to say he's done? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I didn't even know he's practicing, to be honest with you. Of course, we've been gone for 10 days, so um, – I don't I don't expect to see him, Brady. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't expect to see him. If you see him, it's going to be a major godsend. But he has been hurt. I don't know exactly what his injury is, but uh he's been gone so long and and I don't see him around. When guys are getting close to coming back, you see them around. Now again, we've been gone for ten days. He's not on the trip. Obviously I wouldn't see him for that, but I just haven't seen him around in the last couple of weeks before we even left on this trip. And that is, that's not a good sign. When you don't see the guy, that's not a good sign because he is, uh, because he's not, you know, when, when they're close to coming back, you get a sense and you hear things and you see the guy. I haven't been at that point. I haven't heard anything on this whole trip. I haven't heard his name once until you brought it up right here, right now. So maybe that tells you. All you need to know. Who knows? One more question here. It says, how do you feel about Alexander Texier's first three games with the Cleveland Monsters? Three games, three goals, three wins. Well, that's great. Now, I, how do I feel about his games? I haven't watched a single one of them, so I haven't seen him play. Th- those numbers that you just told me, they look good. That's fine. Does that translate into coming up here in the last seven games and you know being a factor? Probably not. But it's a good start. It's a good start to your American Hockey League career. So congratulations to him, and I hope that he keeps up the good work because, look, you need every bit of offense that you can find. And if he's going to be that, that is terrific. But it's three games in the American Hockey League. It's a great start, um, but just keep it in perspective. How's that? Does that answer? I, it does answer it. I don't want to be doom and gloom on the kid. I don't know him. I haven't seen him play. He's been in Europe. And like I said, I haven't seen any of his games with the Monsters. I haven't seen one shift of his games against the Monsters. So it might be really good. It might, it might be uh, – I should maybe I should be really, really excited. But you, you should know me by now. You know, when they're here and they're doing it here and they're helping the Blue Jackets win, then I get really excited about it. Until that time – I always have cautious optimism. And those are the words I will leave you with today. Cautious optimism. Thank you for a great batch of questions. Once again, I've got to get all my stuff together, get to the airport, get on a plane, and finally, finally get back to Columbus. I'm telling you, it seems like it's been a month, not just 10 days. It seems like it's been a month or more on this trip. So I am looking forward to getting home. Blue Jackets are playing at home tomorrow night against the New York Islanders, 7 o'clock at Nationwide Arena. It is going to be a huge game. Thursday's game is huge. We want to see you at the rink. The guys need you at the rink. They do. They need you there. They need energy to feed off of. If you don't have tickets yet, 
Go to bluejackets.com today and take care of that and be there for the boys, will you? Until tomorrow, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.